the working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, one, the working power in the precious blood of the land. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm free. I'm glad I'm covered by the blood of Calvary. I'm glad he brought me from the fiery clay. I'm glad he washed my sins away. I'm glad I'm saved. No, he didn't have to do it, but he did. No, he didn't have to do it, but he did. Oh, praise the Lord. He didn't have to do it, but I'm glad. I'm glad he did. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm free. I'm glad I'm covered by the blood of Calvary. I'm glad he brought me from the fiery clay. I'm glad he washed my sins away. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad he washed my sins away. I'm glad I'm saved. Hallelujah. Are you glad you're saved this morning? Are you glad you're free? If you're glad you're free this morning, grab a hand and say, I am free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Ha hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad. Are, whew, ain't nobody glad this morning. Are you glad? <laughs> I'm glad. Somebody say, I'm glad. Hallelujah. I'm glad he woke me up again this morning, aren't you? He didn't have to do it, but he did. Yes. Some of us may have got up and our bones get to cracking it. <laughs> and we want to go back to bed, but praise the Lord. We got enough energy, Sister Glenda, to get up and come to the house of the Lord this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't we glad to be here this morning? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm free. I'm glad I'm covered by the blood of Calvary. I'm glad he brought me from the Mari clay. I'm glad he washed my sins away. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm free. I'm glad I'm covered by the blood of Calvary. I'm glad he brought me from the marble clay. I'm glad he washed my sins away. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad he washed my sins away. I'm glad I'm saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe we can praise him a little bit more this morning, don't you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm glad I'm saved. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Are you covered by the blood this morning? Yeah. Are you covered by the blood this morning? Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Aren't you glad you washed all your sins? Maybe just not one, but all. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Yeah, bunch of washed. I know it. I know it. Well, Brother Donald. Yes, hallelujah. Somebody praise him this morning. We ain't praising him enough yet. And then we'll give it to the pastor and the praise team. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm glad I'm saved. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm washing the blood. I'm glad I'm saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Pastor David. <laughs> Thank you. 
encourage y'all if you're not coming please come and be Danny and Carol are doing I know some of us it takes a little longer to beautify ourselves <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes we don't get to make it but I encourage you this morning to come out to hear uh, the teaching you'll be blessed and won't they, Gene? Amen. Well, and it's not, or don't you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Brent's still looking good this morning. Thank you, Brent. <laughs> it's, it's that new guitar. Oh, he's got a new guitar? Uh, it's new to hear. <laughs> Well, hold that baby up. <laughs> Praise God for the instruments in the house. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we take everything for granted, but when God gives you a new guitar or a new keyboard or a new song, something good. Yeah. Are you done? I, I am done. Are you sure? Sure? <laughs> You don't have to be. <laughs> I am done, I think. <laughs> well, we'll start again. All right. <laughs> oh, my. Well, I am glad I'm saved. Hallelujah. Most of you look like you are. Those of yes. you that don't look that way need to. <laughs> it's good to see some of you I haven't seen in a day or two. Thank you for coming to be with us this morning. It's uh, we got a lot to celebrate. Yes, we we're in a, we're in a world that don't, but we are in a world that does. Yes. You see, there's two of them. We may be in this one, but we're not of this one. Our citizenship's in heaven. That's why we need to celebrate. Yes. And if you can't celebrate this morning, you need to get fixed to where you can. As Jerry Clow would say, you need to have that flung on you. Yes. Woo! Hallelujah. Shoot amongst us. Yes. One of us has got to have some relief. Yes. If you don't know what that's about, look him up and listen to him. <laughs> John Eubanks will get you straightened out. And the Ledbetter boys. <laughs> Anyhow, well, let's see. Before we get too crazy, let's pray, and then we'll get crazy again. <laughs> Father, we thank you for another Lord's Day. Lord, we call it the Lord's Day because on the first day of the week is when you came out of the grave. That's the reason we have the victory. That's the reason we can say, thank God I'm saved, because Jesus rose from the dead, and he has the keys of death in the grave, and we celebrate that today. So, Father, we're, thank you. we're thanking you this morning for that. We thank you for the joy of the Lord, which truly is our strength. We thank you for every person that came to be a part of this service today. Father, we pray that every one of them would find what they need in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's see here. A few announcements. Monday, 630 is uh, movie night again. Chosen series starts again. Tuesday night at 6 o'clock is ministry at Yancey House. We'd love to have any of you come and be with us. And if, if you don't think that's for you, you ought to try it at least once because it will bless you and you'll say, what have I been missing? Wednesday night at 7 o'clock is Bible study. Uh, we're coming up extremely rapidly on Hanging of the Green. That is the last Sunday of the month, right? I'm sorry. 
It's right behind me. I know, but my rear view mirror is not working worth a flip. <clears throat> anyway, if you haven't volunteered to do something and you have the urge to do so, say either Joy or Kim, depending on what you'd like to do. Uh, let's see. Who wants to say something about shoe boxes? Is it the, we don't have, yeah, there's cricket. Talk real loud so us deaf people can hear you. Well, thank you, Cricket, for all you did. Yeah. Do you still need uh, contributions towards shipping costs? Uh huh. Okay. I got you. All right. In in case you don't know about that, uh, the shipping is ten dollars per box, so that's twelve hundred dollars right there. So if you'd like to contribute to that, see Cricket. Uh, Jeff, do you have something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Let's just do that right now. We're going to pray for the people that will receive these shoeboxes, that uh, the Lord would use that to bless them and to also let them experience the, the love of Jesus Christ and, and the gospel. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for those 120 shoeboxes. And Lord, as, as we send them out, we pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would be upon them. We pray that, Lord, when those young people receive those boxes, that not only would they be blessed by having something that maybe they've never had before, and the knowledge that somebody cares, but Lord, that they would realize that you care and you love them, and you love them enough to give your only begotten son, that if they would put their faith in him, they'd be saved. So Father, we pray that you send them where they need to go, and I pray that the anointing would be upon them. And Father, we pray that you would accomplish what they're designed to do and bless those that took part in this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Absolutely. Okay. Any other announcements? Okay. All right. Any more? Uh, let me share this card with you. It says, thank you for the beautiful flowers you sent for mom's funeral. 
Your love, support, and prayers have been a great blessing to me and my family. Thank you again for everything. Your thoughtfulness was appreciated more than you know. Janet, Randy, and the family of Ruby Moody. So thank you so much for that. All righty. Let me have a couple of folks to receive the offering. Steve got us in the mood to praise the Lord, or he did me. How about you? Amen. Well, that was kind of wimpy, but uh, <laughs> I guess we can work with it. Get better by the second verse. Second verse, yeah, that's right. All right, now, I realize this is asking a lot, but would you stand up? <laughs> and, and would you smile at me just, just, just because I'm wanting you to? <laughs> that looks so much better, doesn't it? Well, I'm telling you. You know, uh, the Bible says, those that s let those that seek the Lord rejoice. So you need to rejoice. And, and you know, just kind of let your face know that you're rejoicing. <laughs> Come on now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to smile this morning now. All righty, let's, let's sing to the king.
is returning. We watch and we pray. We will be ready the dawn of that day. And we'll join the singing with all the redeemed. Cause Satan is vanquished and Jesus is King. So come and let us sing a song, a song.
He reigns. Praise him this morning. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Lord, we worship you this morning. And Lord, we declare that you reign. You look at the world and we may not think that it looks that way. But it doesn't matter because, Lord, you know the end from the beginning. And there's nothing that takes you by surprise that's going on in this world right now. And, Lord, your plans are going to come to fruition. Your goal will be accomplished. The kingdom of darkness will be destroyed. And Jesus will rule and reign forever and ever. So, Lord, we worship and we praise you and we thank you for that. And, Lord, we thank you that because of who you are and because of what you've done, Lord, we can rejoice because our God reigns. We can rejoice because we know that you, your thoughts toward us for, are for good and not for evil. Lord, your plan for us is good. Lord, we have the promise that if we're your child, if we love you, Lord, that everything will work together for our good. God, I'm so thankful for that today. I thank you that we have that promise. And it's like the word says, we have exceeding great and precious promises. So, Lord, we stand on those promises today. And because of that, we can rejoice. And because of that, we can give thanks. My days are filled with laughter. My heart has known your peace. I've traveled far, still there is far to go. Cause in my heart there is a longing to look upon your face. Where you are is where I long to be. You are my King. You are the Lamb. You're the Lion of Judah. And you're the Seed of Abraham. walked before me you've made the light to shine out of darkness I am looking for the day when I'll bow before you and lay my crown your feet for you are my king and you are the lamb and you're the lion of Judah you're the seed of
you're the king of Israel, and regardless of what the enemy wants to do to your people, Lord, they will emerge victorious Amen. because you are their king. Lord, the word says that you will defend them, that you will defeat those that come against them, and the word says that you will destroy the nations that come against them because they are your chosen people. They are the people that you chose to bring forth the law to bring forth your word, to bring forth the living word, our Savior and our Messiah. So, Lord, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the nation of Israel. We pray for your people, the Jews, wherever they are. And we bless them today because you said that you would bless those that bless them and you would curse those that curse them. So, Father, we ask you to have mercy on the whole situation that's going on in the Middle East right now and our troops that are stationed in various places over there. And God, we just ask you to be glorified in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Joy was talking a few minutes ago about someone that said they'd sure like to raise their hands, but they, they had just were afraid to. But you know, God looks at our heart and he knows what's in it. And he wants us all to be set free because the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, there's liberty. So uh, however you like to worship this morning, I, I want you to feel free to do that. Some like to lift up holy hands Some like to dance like David danced Some cry and others just smile Some like to stand up others bow But it's the heart that God sees Offered in sincerity In sincerity In spirit and truth we are called There's liberty in Him for all When we worship Him with our heart and soul, we can enter in where the river flows. It's a higher place where the Spirit blows when we worship Him. Each one has their secret place And their own garment of praise And the joy that we're all searching for Is found in the presence of the Lord When we worship Him we can enter in where the river flows it's in a higher place of where the spirit blows we Where the river flows in 
is a higher place Up where the Spirit blows When we worshiping Yes, it's a higher place Up where the Spirit blows And we you this day we bless your name and we praise you and lord we're so thankful that we can worship and i'm so thankful that we have liberty to do what we want to do lord whether it be laugh or cry whether it be stand up or sit raise our arms or keep them down lord as long as we're worshiping you with all our heart that's all that matters and lord i pray that this morning that you would turn our hearts to you and Lord, that you would be our only focus today. And Lord, that you'd do a work in us that would draw us closer and give, her, give us a deeper revelation and a closer relationship. So Lord, we ask you to turn our hearts and draw us close. We love you and we praise you and we surrender to you today. In Jesus' name. Turn my heart, oh Lord. 
today until our name truly brings honor to the Lamb. Lord, we worship you this morning. Lord, thank you that, that, that you have loved us so much that you were willing to pay such a price for our redemption. Lord, we love you and praise you today. Lord, we just give this time of worship and praise to you. And Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Be blessed today. And we offer this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. There we go. Cool. I was in a mood to worship this morning. Praise the Lord. How about you? I'll tell you what, there are just certain times that it just feels like, uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I realize that went a little longer than usual, but bear with me. They'll, they'll still have food at the steakhouse when you get done. You may not be first in line, but that might be good. We're going we're gonna to look this morning beginning in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, the first four verses. 
This is familiar scripture, but listen to it again. To everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, <clears throat> a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. Now, which one of you is praying that he don't preach this morning? <laughs> Mercy. I know I didn't sing that hard. <clears throat> when I hear the word season, I automatically think spring, summer, fall, and winter. Or if I guess some people would say autumn. <clears throat> But to me, it's fall because that's what the leaves do. Uh, or I think about something like somebody says the Christmas season, which, believe it or not, is almost on us. That's, that's hard to conceive of for me because yesterday was spring. <clears throat> it's amazing. Uh, and I was looking at this where the Bible tells us that there's a season for everything. And I thought I would just look up that word to see what Webster said about it. And season means a whole lot more than I was thinking. <clears throat> this is what he says it is. He said it's a time characterized by a particular circumstance or feature, like a season of spiritual awakening, uh, a suitable time or occasion, like something, a word in season. That's a period of time. could be the part of the year that's divided into four parts. <clears throat> A period marked by a special activity like hunting season, fishing season, football season. But then it, you know, those basically are nouns. And then, he, then season also is a verb and it means to give flavor, to treat something, to prepare it for use. Like how many of you have ever seasoned a skillet, an iron skillet? Or it means to make something fit by experience. Like, You've heard the term a seasoned veteran or something. So there's a lot, of, a lot of definitions for season. You know, we all go through seasons in our life. <clears throat> I vaguely remember childhood. Adolescence, I can remember. Then adulthood. And then you could lump all of this together. Maturity, senior years, or whatever some idiot meant when he said golden years. Now, I'm a senior and sort of mature, but not really, because I've swore I'd never grow up. <clears throat> but I ain't found the golden years yet. Now, if, if they're just around the corner, that's good, but uh, I've, I've missed that somewhere. So we all go through those seasons, and then there's kind of like spiritual seasons where you have innocence and accountability and choice. You know, when you're pre, what's the word? We have used to use age of accountability. You know, before a child learns right and wrong, we tend to think of that as an age of innocence. And I tend to agree. I think if a child leaves this world before it's at the point of accountability and understanding, I think that child goes to heaven. I believe that with all my heart. Uh, but, you know, we go through these, these seasons in our life, that time before we really understand, and then all of a sudden we become accountable because we begin to figure out what wrong and right is. And then we come to a season of choice. We have to make a choice. And when we get to that point, it can go one of two ways. We can either surrender to the truth and to the Lord and, ex and live in a season of obedience followed by a season of reward, or we can reject things and live in disobedience and we're eventually going into a season of punishment so the question is today what season are you in now if you're a child of God there's other seasons I remember from my own experience when I first became a Christian there was a season of nearness man I could sense the presence of God like he had a hold of me 
It was un un unimaginable. It was incredible. And there was a season of blessing. And when I say that, every prayer was answered quick. Any of you have that experience when you first got saved? Man, that was awesome. And I've, I've said this before, but I'll never forget. I was praying. I think it was at this very altar. Uh, I'd been a believer for maybe a year or so. And I was here. I came by myself one day. Wasn't anybody around. It wasn't a church day or not. And I just came in to pray. And I was praying, and I'll never forget, the Lord spoke to me and said, when are you going to give me permission to test you? And I said, never. Forget it. I never was good at tests. He said, I have to. I said, no, you don't, really. Just keep up the good work. <laughs> he said, I have to. And I said, okay. Hmm. And then you go through seasons of remoteness and testing. It feels like God took off somewhere. And I'll never forget what that felt like. I said, what did it do to make you mad? What season are you in? You may be going through that time right now, that season of testing where it seems like God has taken a vacation and he's not answering prayer, he's not doing anything else. But... Think of, you know, one of my favorite people in all Scripture is Joseph. And you know uh, how he started out. Man, God blessed him. Uh, he, was, he was so close to God because God gave him dreams about things that were going to happen. And he was blessed of his father because his father, you know, he was the pick of the litter. You know, God uh, just put a special love in his father's heart for him. But then what happened? He was hated by his brothers. He was sold as a slave. He was slandered. He was imprisoned. And he was forgotten. Can you imagine what that must have been like for him? Psalm 105, 17 through 19 says this. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold as a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. And I don't like to be tried, do you? I'm not into testing. I, I told teachers in school that I didn't like tests worth a flip. It didn't make much difference, but I told them that. I told the Lord the same thing. It didn't make much difference then either. Something about that has to be happened. But you know, the very fact that Joseph was tested, as Psalm 105 says, you know, it humbled him. And it made him fit to be the second most powerful person on earth. Because at that time, Egypt was the superpower. And he was placed in that position of power and authority. And he was placed in that position because God seasoned him. You know, remember those two verb definitions of season? To prepare something for use. Or to make something fit by experience. Man, he had experienced the depths. He had experienced feeling like God was somewhere else. Can you imagine? This was a young man that, that loved God, that he was in fellowship with the Lord. The Lord spoke to him and revealed things to him. And all of a sudden, all this goes wrong in his life. And it wasn't just for a day or two. I mean, it went on and on. He was in prison if you do the math, it looks like somewhere between 10 and 13 years. Not for anything that he did, but because of something he didn't do. I mean, he stood for what was right and still was thrown in prison. And then when he interpreted dreams and the people were, you know, one of them was set free, he said, tell the king I'm in here. He was forgotten. But he was being seasoned. So don't be discouraged. If you're going through a time when it feels like God's taken a vacation and gone somewhere else, if you feel like he's not heard a prayer you've prayed in however long, as long as you're not walking in sin, as long as you're still being faithful to him, realize you're just being seasoned. And the reason that you are means God's got something for you to do. Joseph was there 
the word of the Lord tried him until his word came. God's got a word for you that's going to come if you stay faithful. And remember, there's no use to season something unless you're going to use it. Why would you season a skillet if you weren't going to cook cornbread? So what season are you in? What are you going through? Now, if you're not a child of God, if you've never been saved, if you've not surrendered to Him, you go through seasons too, because I remember there's things I don't remember well, but boy, I remember them days before I became a Christian. There's a season of searching. You're looking, you're looking for happiness. You're looking for something to fulfill your life. Man, I tried. I tried everything I could think of. I tried all the, the pleasures of this world. I tried the occult. I tried Hinduism, I tried, you name it, and I never found anything that fulfilled, that gave me a purpose, that brought real happiness to me. So I went through that period of searching. But you know, there's another period that you go through, and that's the period of being exposed to the truth. God will see fit in every person's life that you're going to hear the gospel somehow. He's going to do that. And when you hear that gospel and when you've been exposed to that truth, there's another season come called conviction. Boy, that one's fun. You remember that? You remember the days before you surrendered to the Lord? It's, it's misery. <laughs> I was talking about Jerry Clower, and it's really the truth. Shoot amongst us, one of us has got to have some relief. The most miserable time in my life was when I had been exposed to the truth and the convicting power of the Holy Spirit was on me. I didn't know exactly what was going on, but I knew I'd had to get better to die. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything. It was horrendous. And then when conviction comes, there's that season of struggle. You're, you're trying, you know, the, the, the spirit of the Lord is dealing with you and the spirit of the flesh is resisting it. and The devil's jumping in the mix. And man, what a battle is going on. You're wrestling with that choice. And if you don't choose immediately, then it's followed by a season of fleeing, running from God. Anybody ever do that? Man, I tell you what, I did. That ain't fun either. But you're brought eventually to a time of decision. You've got to make a choice. Now, what season are you in? If you're not saved and you're going through something like that, rejoice. You say, are you nuts? No, rejoice. And I'll tell you why. It's because God ain't give up on you. If you're still going through the struggle, if you still got that conviction if, if, if there's something going on in you that's just making you miserable, it's because you're still in a season of grace. God's not closed the book. God's not thrown up his hands. He is still dealing with you. He's not turned you over to a reprobate mind. Rejoice. God's still reaching out. It's not too late. But here's the thing. This is your season. This is your moment. If God is re, you know, dealing with you and you're in turmoil, you're trying to decide what to do. Listen to this. 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and 2. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Don't waste your season of grace. Don't waste it. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee or comforted thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Right now, when he's dealing with you, is the moment that you need to respond. You need to make the choice. You need to surrender to him. Because here's the dangerous part. Proverbs 29 verse 1. He that being often reproved hardens his neck shall be suddenly destroyed and that without remedy. You see, if you say no too many times, then all of a sudden God says, okay, that's it. There's a time that God stops dealing with you. 
You can read about it in, first, in Romans chapter 1. So if that struggle is still going on in you, you're still being exposed to the grace of God. That's your season of grace. And now, right now, this moment, this day is your opportunity to settle the battle. It's your opportunity to say yes to Jesus. It's your opportunity to be born again, to have your sins forgiven, and that struggle to be over with, and that conviction to be lifted off you, and the joy of the Lord replace it. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't receive God's grace in vain. Don't let that grace be wasted that he's offering to you. Remember, if you say no too many times, the Bible says there's that danger that you would be destroyed without remedy. You don't want that to happen. Now, the earth itself goes through seasons. I think of, when I think about the history of the planet, I think of spring being the time of creation. Can you imagine what it's like in spring, you know, uh, Barrenness and deadness just burst forth into life. Fresh grass, fresh leaves, flowers everywhere. And I think about what the earth must have been like when God first created it. Man, that, talk about springtime. And for me, summer would have been when he planted that garden we call Eden. And he put man and woman in there to tend the garden. So you had spring and then you had summer, but summer was pretty short. Fall came early that year. When sin came into the picture, and man, we've had a long season to fall. Sin entered, man rebelled, Satan ruled. Whew, what a mess. But winter's coming. Winter's coming really quick. And for me, winter is the time when Antichrist comes to power and tribulation breaks out across the earth and God's wrath is poured out. Now, what season are we in now? Well, we're in the very end of fall, and winter's almost upon us. Birth pains that Jesus talked about are getting stronger everywhere. I was looking at a report yesterday, the day before, said in 24 hours there were 1,400 earthquakes in Iceland alone. 1,400. Man, that's, <laughs> that is moving on. Not to mention the rest of the world. We see wars and terrorism all over the earth. We see Israel being the focus of all nations. Anti-Semitism is spreading like a virus. Violence is filling the cities, the streets, the cities, the earth. And the world itself is shaking. It's just like Romans 8.22 says, For we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. That's the season we're in. But as a child of God, we need to remember something. We need to remember the other definition of season. And that one is to bring flavor, to produce flavor. I love what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 13. He said, you're the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It's thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. You're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You see, our purpose is to bring 